want to share a story that is familiar to some of you and not familiar to others. It took place in the early 1960s. And in the 1960s, there were still headhunters and cannibals in the world as whole tribes of people, specifically in several countries. One was a place called Irian Jaya, which is an island, half an island nation in the South Pacific. And some missionaries went there, a husband, wife, and two boys, Don and Carol Richardson, went to Irian Jaya. And they went to live among three tribes that were cannibals. Now, cannibals are where you you know, and shrink the head and do all these kind of things. And then they were somewhat cannibalistic as well as headhunters. And so they were eating each other's flesh, just totally out of control, gross. But they were doing this. And somehow they treated Don and Carol well. Now, how you could drop two little kids and a mom and dad into this setting and still, they were okay though. I think because they brought some farm implements and they brought some technology back then in terms of helping them with farming. And so they liked them. So these three tribes liked them. They stayed in one tribe called the Sawi tribe. Well, these three tribes were always fighting, killing each other, doing the headhunting thing that they do and the cannibalistic thing. And these people, the Richardsons, were getting very nervous. What if their two boys were you know, just out on the path in front and all of a sudden warring people come and they were very nervous. But while they were there, they stayed there and their goal was to learn the language and to share the story of the gospel to all these people. And so they learned the language through different ways and the people were pretty friendly to them. So they were not in harm's way overtly, just kind of covertly, I guess. And so they learned the language. And so Don started sharing the gospel, not with Jesus Christ. He started at creation, Genesis chapter one. And he worked his way through the storyline. And every night he would go out on his little hut, out on the front of the hut, and he would tell the story to anybody who would come and listen. Eventually, the whole village would come and listen in the evening to his story. They were enthralled by the story. And when he got to the story of Jesus, the whole birth, they caught on, they were catching it. Nobody became a believer, though, but they got to the story of Jesus. And do you remember the story of Jesus? Something happens. There is a man who betrays Jesus. His name was Judas. And when he told the story of Judas, they began to erupt in, they didn't clap, I think they clicked, but I'll clap. They clapped because Judas was the hero of the story. Why? Because treachery was a part of their society. To befriend somebody and become friends with them and then to turn on them was an attribute was a quality of this head-hunting cannibalistic society. And Don said, he, he wrote a book about it after. He said, I didn't know what to do. What do you do when, you can't eat, when wrong is right and right is wrong and they're killing each other and treachery is the way of the day? And he wanted to leave. He just said, there's nothing I can do with this group. They're just so pagan. And so they were getting ready to leave. And the people said, don't leave, stay with us. He said, you know, know, I can't speak to you. There's nothing I can say that you'll understand about the true gospel, which is Jesus Christ, because their hero was Judas, not Jesus. Then one day, there was a huge battle between two of the tribes. People were getting killed, all these things were going on, and that's when Don said, we're leaving. It's just too dangerous here, and I'm getting nothing done. And the leader of the Sawi tribe said, don't go, because tomorrow we're going to solve this problem. And he thought, how are you going to solve it? Your, your idea of solving it is treachery and all these things? He said, just wait. So the next day, the Sawi tribe assembled on this side of the river. The other tribe that I don't, can't pronounce the name, they were on this side of the river. And one of the men took a baby boy, his boy, and grabbed him and walked through his tribe across to the other tribe and handed his young infant boy to the leader of the other tribe. 
at which time the leader took the baby and passed it in his hands to every person in that tribe, and they kissed his forehead. Then someone from that tribe took a baby, and the same thing happened on this side to the Sowies. They swapped a baby. And afterwards, Don, through his translator who had been his friend, said, what happened? And he said, we had a peace child. A peace child. And he said these words to Don, there can be no peace without a peace child. And Don then knew how he could share the gospel. And then retold the story of God in heaven, far on the other side of the river, bringing a peace child to the people in the tribes, and his name is Jesus. And so many came to the Lord in those two tribes, and I think the third tribe as well, because they understood the peace child. You see, there are things in this world that show even headhunters of the love of God. And there are people here in this modern society that we live in who have no time for the Bible, no time for God, no time for anything, but let me tell you, you have the opportunity to share the love of God through his son, Christ. For them, they called it the peace child, and they got it. We have a great story of a God who has interacted with us for a purpose. And we're going to look a little bit at that purpose today.